Proverbs chapter 23. And I'm going to begin reading here in verse number 6 and verse 7. Praise God. The scripture says, Eat thou not the bread of him that has an evil eye. Now that's good information, isn't it? Praise God. But that ain't what I'm preaching on tonight. But then he goes on to say, Neither desire thou his dainty meats. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, says he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. Amen. Amen. Praise, God. Praise God. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name for another opportunity Hallelujah. to break the bread of life. Father, we ask on tonight that you will touch our hearts as we humble ourselves before thee. That your word might enlighten us and give us an understanding and strength to go on. That we might see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And we bless you forevermore in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We're coming out of Proverbs chapter 23, verses 6 and 7. And I want to look at verse number 7 again, where it says, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Amen. Praise God. Now, when you take a look at what is written in Scripture, the Holy Ghost is moving upon Solomon, the son of David. And we all know that Proverbs is called the book of wisdom. Yeah, yeah. Solomon was endowed with great wisdom. Yeah. He had many personal experiences just as, just as well. But he had great wisdom. Amen. And God moves him to share this wisdom with each and every one of us. Amen. That's why it's important to be swift to hear and slow to speak. Because God is attempting to put something in your heart Hallelujah. so that you can see change take place in your life because nothing is going to change in your life until the mind change amen, amen. he said again in verse 7 for as he thinketh in his heart so is he now why it's important that we change our mindset praise God I'm going to tell you why it's so important that we change our mindset because the mind, which is also called the brain, is the part that controls the whole body. Amen? Amen. Did you not know that your brain, which is also called your mind, controls your whole body? Amen? Amen? Now, if we don't change our mindset, then we're going to allow other influences mm -hmm. to make decisions for us. Are you listening to me? Amen. We'll always think and act contrary to God's word. Now, how many know that the word of God is truth? And it leads to life everlasting. Yes. God is able to order your steps Hallelujah. in righteousness yes. and lead you in the right direction. Amen. But you got to change your mindset. That's where it starts. Changing your mindset. Praise God. Amen. Now I'm going to prove this because I want you to get this now. We have to change our mindset. Does that make sense? Yes. Why must I change my mindset? Because again, the brain is what controls the whole body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
And that's why the text says, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You're going to live how you think. This 
way, but your carnal mind that has not been renewed is leading you in a total different direction. Come on. Are you listening to me? Let's read that in Romans chapter 8. Now again in this text, who is the apostle addressing? He's talking to the beloved. Saints of the Most High God that was in the Gentile city of Rome. And listen to what he says to them. Romans chapter 8. Beginning at verse number 5. Now he just got through telling them in verse number 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. Then you get down to verse number 5 he says for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Praise God. Do you see that? Do you see why the mind must get in the process of being renewed? Even after you have become a born again believer in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. You can't get satisfied that I speak in tongues. And God used me in prophecy. And he used me to lay hands. And, and, and they got healed. Demons came screaming out. But that does not change the fact. That if you don't get in the process of getting your mind renewed. You may move in the gifts of the spirit. Is still carnal. 
And unless the mind goes through the process of being renewed, then the Holy Ghost will be leading you one way, but your carnal mind will be going the opposite direction. Amen? Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And this is why the mind must go through the process of being transformed and become spiritual. It must line up with the Spirit of God that one has received through grace by faith in Christ. Are you listening to me? Amen. Amen. Glory to God. This is why so many people who have received the Holy Ghost have a problem with many things that's in the Bible. They speak in tongues, but yet over here they fight much of what the Bible said because they never took time to sit at the feet of Jesus and allow themselves to go through the process of having their mind renewed. Because until your mind get renewed by the word of God, you don't think the way you think. Well, this is what I believe. Well, this is my opinion. Well, this is how I feel about it. Come on now. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. But you know what the scripture says? In the book of the prophet Isaiah chapter 55, God said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. And God said, I'm going to show you just how different my thoughts is from your thoughts. He said, So are my ways from your ways and my thoughts from your thoughts. Now if we're going to begin to have the mind of God and begin to think the way he think, then we got to get in the process of having our minds renewed. And it takes the power of God's word being taught and received in order for that to happen. And many times them who have sat in the church have not even gave attention to the teaching of God's word. Not only do they spend time at home going over the scriptures and allowing, amen, his truth to get in their inward parts. Are you listening to me? Praise God. Does that make sense? Thank you, Jesus. And then there are some people they have never got in the process of having their mind renewed because they have experienced in their lifetime so much trauma. Amen. Hallelujah. They have not taken time out to get healed. You understand? Amen. That's why therapy is so important. And I'm not talking about therapy as it pertains to them that give it in the world. I believe in counselors. The Bible says by the multitude of counselors, there is safety. And where, there, and where no counsel is, the prophet Isaiah said, For unto us is given a son, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and he shall be called Wonderful Counselor. The mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. How many know? Can't nobody counsel you like God can. They can only 
we do so much. And much of the time after they give you therapy, they give you a prescription. And you'll find out that many of these therapists today that are in the world, when they get through with you, they got a therapist. Oh, yes, sir. They got a therapist. So how can one that needs therapy give therapy? I heard an old Holy Ghost preacher say one time, he that healed the lepers must not himself be one. So if you need therapy, you can't administer therapy. If you need deliverance, you can't administer deliverance. If you got a devil, you can't cast out a devil. If you ain't saved, you can't be telling somebody else they need to be saved. Come on, somebody. Praise God. Some people can't get their mind renewed because they're dealing with a lot of things in their life that they seem to can't get past. But how many know Christ is still the answer? Hallelujah. And many, many don't ever give Jesus an opportunity. I'm talking about a real opportunity. They don't give him a real opportunity. Hallelujah. If they don't, if Jesus don't give them a quick fix, they count him out. And Jesus ain't about giving anybody a quick fix. Come on. He's not going to work some cheap, some cheap mu mu magician's trick just to get your attention. Hello. Praise God. But then there are some people who are experiencing post-traumatic syndrome. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, for instance, like what Mother M went through when she accidentally killed someone. Praise God. And she went through some post-traumatic syndrome. See, that's something that that you have to deal with in the mind. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Because it will trouble you. Yeah. It'll torment you. Yes. It'll mess with you day and night. Yeah. And you need to get healed from that. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Praise God. And there are many people that, that suffer from post-traumatic syndrome. Yeah. Come on. People have been raped. People have been beaten. I mean, all different types of things have happened to people. There's folks who have been in the military and been in a war. All types of things that people have been through that they need to be healed in the mind. But how many know that Jesus can heal the mind? The Bible says in the Gospel of Mark, Jesus cast out the legions. The word legion means 3,000 to 6,000 men. He had 3,000 to 6,000 demons in his body. And the Bible says that day and night he screamed and hollered and tormented himself. He tortured himself. The devil was tormenting his mind. Praise God. And all God is no 
don't respect the person. What he's done for one, he'll do for another. But how many know he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and he's a rewarder to them. He's a rewarder to them. He's a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. When you come to God, you got to come believing. You can't come doubting. You got to come believing. Because there ain't nothing too hard for God. God can heal you from PTSD. He can heal the broken heart. Is that what he said? Amen. Gospel of Luke chapter 4, verse 18 and 19. Jesus said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for God has anointed me to heal the broken heart. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's nothing that he can't do. Amen. Praise God. But many people suffer from PTSD. Mm -hmm. There's many that have a broken heart, been shattered in a million pieces. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Many people have problems in the area of the mind because they are vexed with demons. There are many people that are having problems in the mind is because of a chemical imbalance. There are others that are having problems in the mind because they're stressed. Hallelujah. Yeah. They're stressed. And stress is known as the silent killer. Hallelujah. They've allowed the cares of this life to stress them out. Hallelujah. You know, when you become so worried over so many different things, it can stress you out. Yeah. And there are people who have been stressed out. They laid down and never got back up again. Yeah. There's some people that's been stressed out. The devil began to tempt them to kill themselves and end it all and all their troubles would be over. That's what he had them believe in. Are you listening to me? Praise God. Some people have problems in the mind because they just have a chemical imbalance. There's some people that have problems in the mind because they're just so negative about everything. Come on. They're just so negative. You ever seen people just negative? Almost everything come out their mouth is negative. Then you wonder why they're the way they are. See, death and life is in the power of your color. That's how people are the way they are. They ain't never positive. They never speak righteousness. They never speak life. Everything come out their mouth is negative. Everything that come out their mouth is death. You know why they talking like that? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. This is what they think in their mind. That's their mindset. That corrupted mindset. And they need to change their mindset. Come on. Glory to God. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Amen. You got to change your mindset. Because again, the mind or the brain which is the nervous system, controls the whole body. The brain, which is the mind, sends messages to every part of your body. Your body never functions, it never moves, it never does anything until the mind sends a signal for it to do whatever it does. And if your thought life is contrary to the word of God, that's why we live the way we live. Amen. That's why God is not pleased. Amen. That's why things happen the way they happen. Because we're outside of the will of God. 
Amen? Amen. How many understand we must change our mindset? Amen. We must change our mindset. Amen. And again, the beginning of changing your mindset starts with repentance. The Greek word again is meant to know you, which means to change the mind. Uh -huh. See, that's, that's where it really starts. Right. Uh -huh. Then it's important that you sit at the feet of Jesus and let him teach you his word. Amen. But as he's teaching, you got to be attentive. Yeah. You got to be receptive. It's not, it's not enough for you to be a hearer only. You got to be a doer. And the only way you'll ever be a doer, you got to be attentive and receptive of what you heard come out of the mouth of God. Amen. Come on. Amen. And I mean, you got to really take heed to his words and let them sink down in your ears. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And you got to go over it and over it again. And you got to go over it and over it again. That's why David said his word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Amen. Praise God. See, the mind needs to hear things over and over. Amen. Have you ever told somebody something? And the next day they seem to forget what you told them. Yeah. Have God ever told you something? And you seem to forget what God said. Right. You, can, you know what certain things in the Bible says, but you can get a little ways down the road and forget all about God said that. Yeah. That's why you ought to uh, meditate on his word day and night. Yeah. And that's another reason why we need the Holy Ghost, because Jesus said that he would bring you in remembrance of all things. And that's all he only brings you into remembrance the things you have previously known. Amen? Amen. Praise God. But it is our responsibility to keep ourselves in remembrance. And the Holy Ghost, which is that paraclete, the one called alongside the help, he will also help to keep you in remembrance of things that God has uttered out of his mouth. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Are you listening to me? Thank you, Jesus. We got to change our mindset. Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. However you think, that's how you're going to live. However you think, that's what you believe. People live the way they live because that's what they believe. Their mouth may say, oh, I believe this and I believe that. Which is according to scripture, but if their lifestyle contradict what they say they believe that's according to scripture, they have just proven themselves to be a liar. Amen. Because if your lifestyle contradicts what you say, right. then you have just exposed yourself. Right. So you can say one thing and live another. Yeah. Is that what the Pharisees did in Matthew chapter 23? They say and do not. Right, yeah. Amen. That's what you see in the house of God today. From the pulpit to the back door. Many say, I believe the Bible, but they live contrary to it. You know why? As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And they will show you that they really don't believe the Bible. They believe their emotions. They believe what other people say. I don't care how logical it sounds, what other people say, you got to weigh everything by the word of God. Believe not every spirit, but try the spirit to see whether it be of God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. Are you listening to me? And I don't care how logical certain things sound, if it contradicts the Bible, if it is opposite of what it is a lie. Somebody say praise God. We got to change our mindset. The Apostle Paul, who was moved by the Holy Ghost, told the saints in Rome. He 
He said, the carnal mind is enmity against God. Who is he talking to? He's talking to the beloved. He's talking to Holy Ghost field saints. That's why every child of God needs to understand don't get satisfied because God has blessed you to be filled with the Holy Ghost. You've been birthed into the spiritual body of Christ. But it doesn't stop there. Your mind got to get renewed. Because you can think one way, but the Holy Ghost is leading you a whole nother way. That mind must be transformed so it will always be in agreement with the Spirit of God. That's right. That's right. Glory Amen. Amen. And this is why you have so many people in the house of prayer. They're not speaking the same thing. Mm -hmm. They're not of the same mind and of the same judgment because their minds have not been renewed in the word of God. Amen. See, it must be the word of God. Right. Not a bunch of people preaching from the Bible, but they're misinterpreting the Bible. Or they're being partial with God's word. Amen. Teaching you have truths. Right. That's not going to renew your mind. Amen. That's still going to cause separation. Didn't the apostle say, 1 Corinthians 1 verse 10, that there be no divisions among you? Amen. And false doctrine will cause division. Amen. That's why your mind got to be renewed. Yes, you know why the saints were on one accord in the first century? Because they all continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. Amen. Is that what he said in Acts chapter 2, verse 42? Amen. The Apostle Paul even made a statement in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17. He said, I teach these things everywhere in every church. So they all was getting the same teaching. The Apostle received one revelation from Christ Jesus and he taught the whole counsel of God Amen. to the Gentile believers. Amen. Hello, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you know, today we got all these different types of preachers. Oh, yeah. Huh? Amen. And nobody, nobody tries the spirit. Uh -huh. We just believe because they got a title in front of their name. Right. They legit. Because they got degrees behind their name. They legit. Right. Because they got a church. We think they legit. Because they own television and radio. Because they got an Instagram or, or Facebook live service going on. We believe they legit. We don't even try the spirit to see whether they are God. And that's why Jesus said you should know them by the fruit that they bear. God ain't sending nobody to lie to you. I don't care how charismatic they sound when they preach it. I don't
Any time a man will take a step back and let his wife be the boss, God's judgment is on the way. Right. Oh, yes, sir. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Amen. Just like in the world we live today, everybody want to change gender roles. Well, in the marriage, the wife want to change gender roles. She want to be the man, and the man wants to be the woman. Right. Judgment is coming. Amen. Because one thing God right. is kindled in his anger is when humanity breaks his divine order of authority. Amen. You can go back to the book of Isaiah, the prophet chapter 3. The Bible said Jerusalem and Judah is ruined. And one of the things he said, he said, children are their oppressors. And women rule over them. They that lead thee cause thee to err. And when you go and look at that particular chapter, you see that God's judgment was in motion. Because gender roles had been changed. Amen. Just like you see in society. Everybody wants to change gender roles. Women don't want to change their mindset. Because the truth is, many of them want to be a man. Right. Right. They, don't, they won't say that they don't want that. Of course they'll say they don't want to be a man. But it's not about what you say. It's your actions. If you can't humble yourself and submit to your husband, it's because you want to be a man. You are a Jezebel. Come on. You ain't no daughter of Sarah. You are a daughter of Jezebel. Anytime these men won't stand up and lead their home as an Ahab, he has an effeminate spirit. See? Amen. God's judgment is on the way. Because God will not tolerate that. Because look at society with that. Look at same sex relationships. Praise God. You have a man that wants to cross-dressed as a woman, but then he, into, he marries a woman. Hello, somebody. Is not our world confused? Well, that's what happens when they uh, decide that they don't need their creator. Satan, the devil, brings confusion. That's why the whole world is confused. The whole world thinks they're smart with their technology. But the whole world is confused. And they're troubled. They're weary. They're miserable. Most of them will never tell you they are. But they are. And they're looking for other means apart from Jesus Christ to obtain peace. That's why the world today is seeking world peace without Jesus. They want peace without Jesus. And when the beast come, the Antichrist, the son of perdition, the man of sin, the book of the prophet Daniel says he's going to obtain the kingdom by flatteries. And he's going to bring in a false peace. And them that are in Jerusalem and other nations will comply and enter into an agreement for seven years. Praise God. But it's a false peace. What did the prophet Isaiah say? In chapter 48 verse 22. There is no peace unto the wicked. Saith the Lord. There's not one unsaved person. On the face of the earth. That has true peace. They may pretend like they got real peace. They don't have no true peace. Those people are miserable. Many of them ain't telling you. What they really experiencing. What they really going through. Everybody needs Jesus. Amen. The Muslim need him. And the atheists need him. The Hindu and the Buddhists need him. The Wiccans need him. The Freemasons need him. Come on. The Greek metal organizations need him. Come on now. Are you listening to me? I don't care who you are. What your religion is. And if you don't profess nobody's religion. Everybody needs Jesus. Yeshua HaMashiach. For he is the Prince of Peace. The Lamb of God. Hello somebody. He's our creator. Amen. 
Even the beast of the field honor him. Hmm? Amen. Come on. Amen. They don't honor the Pope of Rome. They don't honor Muhammad right. or Confucius. They don't honor the Dalai Lama. Come on, God. But the beast of the field honor Jesus. Because he they create. And they know him when they see him. They begin to bow before him. Hallelujah. Y'all don't believe that even devils recognize who Jesus was. Come on, God. The men who had legions of demons in the Gospel of Mark chapter 5, God, the Bible said when that man saw Jesus, he ran to him and bowed on his face. And them demons begin to cry out and say, we know who thou are. Thou art Jesus, the Holy One of Israel. And if demons recognize him, you know the beast of the because when Jesus was out there in the wilderness, do you not know there were beasts out there too? But none of them messed with him. They knew who he was. Come on. When John the Baptist was out there preaching in the wilderness, there were beasts out there, but God even protected him and kept him from messing with him. When Daniel was thrown in the lion's den, God sent an angel to lock their jaws. And Daniel was found sleeping on the lions. Hello, somebody. Why are you listening to me? Glory to God. There ain't nothing too hard for him. Somebody stand to your feet and give God a standing ovation. Come on, somebody. Praise God. We need to change our mindset. That's the problem. We need to change our mindset. That's the problem with the world. That's the problem in marriages. That's the problem with parenting. It's our mindset. It's the way we think. We think it's about what I think. Or what I want to do. Why can't do it the way I want to do it? See? See, that's the mind. Yeah, People don't want to submit to authority and do it, do it somebody else's way. Jesus. Amen. People want to do it their way. Those Frank Sinatraites. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. But Solomon, the son of David, said there's a way that seen it right into a man. Yeah. But the end of his way is the way of death. That's why you headed down because of their corrupted mindset, Satan beguiled Eve. Praise God that he might also corrupt our minds from the simplicity that's in Christ. Just as he beguiled Eve, he's also corrupted our minds from the simplicity that's in Christ. We ignorant today because we want to be. The apostle said in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, he said, if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. The word ignorant comes from the word ignore. When you ignore the truth, when you ignore your responsibility, that's what makes you ignorant. It ain't that you don't know. It's you ignore your responsibility. You ignore the truth of God. You put it on the back burner. That's why he said if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. The apostle was teaching him. But if you want to continue to do it your way, he said let him be ignorant. The prophet Hosea said in chapter 4 God spoke to him and said to the children of Israel, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. It wasn't that they weren't getting it. A lot of times people ignore it. Amen. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. And because thou has rejected knowledge, and it was getting it. Because yeah. thou has rejected knowledge, God says, I will also reject thee. So when you reject the knowledge of God's word, you are rejecting God. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word 
was God. And that's why a lot of people are headed for destruction. They won't change their mindset. They go home with the same mind. Wake up with the same mind. Come back to the house of God with the same mind. Leave out the door with the same mind. Go to work tomorrow with the same mind. Come back home from work with the same mind. For you know the year didn't pass. They still got the same mind. Going in the same direction. Doing the same thing. Seeing the same results. It's all because they refuse to change the mind. When you begin to change your mindset, you begin to change your destiny. But until then, you still go in the same direction down that broad road that leads to destruction. You change your destiny when you change your mindset. And I'm talking about going the way of God. Not just talking God. You got to put the word into practice. You can't just talk God and I believe in God and I believe the Bible and, and that's it. Uh-uh. You got to do more than talk. Be not a hearer only but a doer. But he that is a hearer and not a doer, you deceive yourself. Don't be like the Pharisees in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 23. They say and do not. They honored God with their lips, drew nigh to him with their mouth, but their heart was far from him. Praising God over here, but their heart is far from him. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Oh, you know, praising God is not real praise. Because the heart ain't even in it. There's no joy. There's no consecration. There's no genuine love for him. But we're just going through the motions of praying. But my heart is over here. Where a man's treasure is, there's where his heart is. And we think that God doesn't see those things. God knows exactly where you are. Amen. And we come to a place in our life, we don't even care what the Bible says. We can break down the scriptures and we can show you what thus saith the Lord. And people will still go and do the opposite. Because in their corrupted mind, they think ain't nothing wrong with it. You need to change your mindset and begin to line up with God's word, and you're going to be lost. With your, I don't think nothing's wrong with it. Yeah, that's what the, that's what the rich young ruler thought too. Hmm? And Jesus had to show him his sin. Cry loud, spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet, and show the people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sin. Praise God. And Jesus had to show him his sin. One thing thou lackest, sell all you have, and you shall have treasures in heaven. Hallelujah. And the Bible says he turned and walked away sorrowfully, for he had many riches. See, that's how it is today. People don't get nothing up. People come to a place in their life, they could be going through hell and high water, still won't repent. Still won't get their life to Jesus. Like Jesus, your enemy or something. He the one that love you. He the one that want to bless you. And he seems to be the one you hate. Well, why would people fight God so much? Right. Why would they resist the Holy Ghost so much? Right. You know why? Well, the apostle said in 2 Timothy chapter 4 that in the last days, perilous times shall come, many will be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. And when you love your sin more than God, you will flip God off because I just want to sin. I love my sin. I love what I do. I love going to the club. I love listening to the worldly music. I love smoking. I love drinking. I love committing adultery. I love having sex outside of marriage. I love having sex with somebody that I'm not married to, even though I'm married. Come on now. You name it, praise God. People love it so much. They love it more than they love God. That's why they can flip God off so easy. It don't have nothing to do with Him. Praise God. All they want from God is His benefits. They don't want Him. They want His benefits. 
The Bible says the froward mouth is an abomination. That's why we need the Holy Ghost. The real Holy Ghost. Because he'll give you power over the flesh to put it down. When you feel it rising back up, it'll knock it back down. <laughs> Hello? Are you listening to me? Does that make sense? Praise God. That's the purpose of the new covenant. That Jesus might come and live in us and give us power over the flesh. Now we can live holy. Now we can keep the righteousness of the law. Hallelujah. Amen. That's what grace and truth brought. Amen. Through Jesus Christ. That's what it brought. How many understand we got to change our mindset? Amen. See, how, see how powerful that is? Yes. As a man thinketh in his heart. So let's see. Why do you think the mind is the battleground of spiritual warfare? Why do you think the enemy attack your mind the way that he does? Right. If he can captivate the mind and control the mind, he has you. Amen. That's why the apostle said in Ephesians chapter 6, put on the helmet of salvation. Yes. Yes. Look at all this spiritual armor. He talked about the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, shoes for the gospel of peace. Take the shield of faith. To quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Because the enemy's always launching an attack against your mind. He's shooting at your mind. He's shooting at your heart. He's trying to kill you. Trying to torment you. He's trying to drag your life through the mud. Because he wants you to leave this life without Jesus. He wants you to give up on God. And kill yourself. Hmm? Amen. He wants you to go crazy and end up in some mental institution. But the truth is, you have unclean spirits that need to be cast out. Hallelujah. 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 And that's why people are so insane. Even in the church. Amen. They need deliverance in the mind. Hallelujah. That's why people are going insane. Why people in the church throw tantrums? They just literally just, just going and insane. Right in the church. You know why? Because we don't follow Jesus. We don't do what he said. We don't follow his teachings. We just go to church and we think because we learned a few truths, we think we above everybody. But yet we ain't even applied those truths to our lives because when the day comes for you to experience your storm when you are called to face your giants when you are called to go to battle with the unclean spirits when you're called to deal with your flesh amen you find yourself on the losing side come on somebody you understand because God is not telling us these things to tell us you're going to be tested you're going to be tried Did David face Goliath? Did he overcome him? You see what he had, didn't you? The anointing was on him. Come on, he was consecrated. Come on, are you listening to me? He wasn't just somebody who stood before a giant. Praise God by the Holy Ghost. He took him down. And before he took him down, he prophesied to him. And told him what he was going to do to him. Before church but your trial is coming yeah. storm season's coming yeah. your challenge is coming come on you gonna be you your your day to get in the boxing ring is coming and when the bell sound ding ding now it's time for war now let's see what you got 
People go home and they came to control this. Right. They don't have anything. They're already showing they don't have anything. Right. They can't even show this. Right. Yeah. Huh? They can't get the victory over this. Devil putting all them thoughts in their mind. And there they go. 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 You don't have any peace. Amen. You are already in bondage. The Bible says the enemy will bring you captive at his own will. Where will he bring you captive at? In your mind. Amen. That's why folks don't have no peace. They don't have no rest. Because they tormented you. But the Bible told us to what? 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Cast down wicked imaginations. That's showing you that the devil, if you give him access to your mind, he's going to flood your thoughts with negativity, with lies, and all the above. What he's trying to do? He's trying to destroy you. He's trying to destroy your marriage. He's trying to destroy you. Right here. Starts right here. I ain't going to never get out of this what I mean. Huh? See, right there. See, right here. Beating you up right there. And we satisfied with that. So we just want people to just come rescue us. Hallelujah. Well, Jesus is attempting to come rescue you, but you won't get on the ship. You won't get on the old ship of Zion. Praise God. You want to get on that man-made boat. But God wants you to get on the old ship of Zion. Come on. Are you listening to me? Ain't no peace in that man-made boat. Ain't no deliverance in that man-made boat. Because once you jump on that boat, that big old shark will come and tip that little boat over. Come on, praise God. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. Praise God. How many believe the Bible? How many know it's true? And the reason why many are living in defeat is because the enemy is defeating you in the area of your mind. You can't look at ungodly television all day and think you're going to have victory. The devil will flood your mind with naked women, cussing, murder, gambling, sodomy. You name the sin, all of it's promoted on the television. But you know, we say nothing wrong nothing wrong with it. Hallelujah. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. You ain't gonna get no victory. No, you're not. Praise God. Yeah. Amen. You can see a woman cheating on her husband on the television. Now you start off on your wife. See that? Come on. You better hear me, praise yeah. God. Y'all get what I'm telling you? Yeah. Am I telling the truth, Mother Ann? Yeah. That's right, praise God. And my David said, I will say no wicked thing before my eyes. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. The man gawking at all them half naked women. And now you starting on him. What you looking at? How did what you think he looking at? Right. Huh? Right. Praise God. Y'all bet you be looking at all these women when you ain't in my presence. See, there you go. See? Oh, yeah. You, you can be in denial all you want. Right. Right. The devil will attack the mind. Yes, if you're defeated in the mind, you're defeated. Right. You can speak in tongues all day. It ain't going to help you. Amen. You need the Holy Ghost Hallelujah. and you need the Word to bring you the mind. Hallelujah. Ain't no if and buts about that. You need the Holy Ghost and you need the Word to renew the mind. I heard a guy say recently, he said, I want the Spirit. I don't want the Word, but I want the Spirit. Well, guess what? You ain't going to get very far, sir. You ain't going to get very far. Praise God, because if you don't want the Word, then you reject the Spirit. You always resist the Holy Ghost. Even as your father did, so did you. And when the Pharisees was rejecting the word that was being preached by Stephen in Acts chapter 7, what did he say? When they rejected the word, you resist the Holy Ghost. Because if you don't receive the word, you abort the Spirit of God. Hello? It's both are important. You need the Holy Ghost and the 
the word of God to balance your life, to balance your walk. Hello? Praise God. Come on and stand to your feet. In Jesus' name, praise God. Oh, he's worthy of glory, honor, and